Okay, thank you so much, Tanya. It's always exciting to be doing a webinar. And I always say it takes like eight to 12 hours to prepare for the one hour webinar, but it's well worth it. Um, thank you everyone for signing up and for coming today. And um, we are gonna do a giveaway at the end. I am giving away, and I'll show you how to use it, Alien Skin Blow Up 3. Uh, you'll sort of have to be here in order to win it. And um, I'm gonna talk to you today about gentle, elegant, quick, easy to do paintings. So I have here some that were done by my students. So I was testing this out. I do workshops here in Asheville, North Carolina, not Nashville, Tennessee. Sometimes people get confused. Asheville is uh, in Western North Carolina in the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's absolutely gorgeous here and very, very arty. I have my own studio here attached to my home. And I only take, I used to take more, but my workshops now are only eight people. That's the maximum I'll take. And um, I do an advanced painter workshop once a year also and a beginner. So you can always find out about that in my newsletter and I'll tell you about that later. So I wanna thank um, Sandy Harrison. This one, this painting of Sandy's and people really, really responded to this, Sandy Harrison Fine Art. This is the original. And once I taught her the technique, this was the finished painting. So I think that's exciting. We'll close that one. No, okay, this one is Amy from Amy Lynn Fine Art. And this is her original capture. And this is her finished painting. And this is sort of Amy's colors. That's her color palette. So it worked out real well for her. And I'm really glad that you know, these people let me use their images to also advertise and show what can be done. And this one is from, I hope I say the name right, um, Phaedra, Benitra, Phaedra, anyway, the information's all down here. And um, this is the one that I did in testing out this, and I'm going to do this one today, actually, so that you get an idea of what I've done before and what we're able to do with this. So this is the image that they sent me, and this was the finished painting. So. I really, really appreciate when people do that. I was looking for a specific look to test this out, and I wanted a very plain background, and most of my images do not have studio backgrounds anymore because everything's on, if I do photography, I'm on location. So I was looking for these things. So I really appreciate that. So, and of course, I wanna thank um, Corel for having me here, and, I want to talk about this technique a little bit with you. And, whoops, just moving this over where it'd be easy to get it. So, I'm in Painter 2019 um, because people always want to know what equipment I'm using. I'm using a Wacom Professional uh, Intuos Pro, and I use the medium size. I do not use a Cintiq. I've had a Cintiq, I sold it because I didn't like I had to lean forward and have my arm up. So my back was always hurting. So way, the way I work is in a chair with arms, so I can lean my arms and take my tablet on my lap. And that's how I work, and that protects my back. So the computer I'm on is an Alienware. Okay, Alienware uh, is sold by Dell. And it's a gamer computer. So I've got 32 gigs on here. And it's their fastest computer they make for gamers. So I've got a great video card. Um, I have found that in the past, I've had to replace laptops. Oh, and 17 inch. Um, I've had to replace laptops about every three years. And this one, I think, is going to go longer than three years. So that's the equipment I use. Um, Pretty simple, and I don't use, I don't like my screen to be crowded. You won't find me using a lot of custom palettes and a lot of the uh, shortcuts because I can find them faster myself. So we're going to talk about this process now. So this is the one I'm going to open up, I'm going to work on. So I'm going to work on her, and the first thing that I need to do 
is I'm going to have open my photo art palette. And these are in palette drawers under window. Oops, palette drawer. I've got my colors and my photo art open. So these are the only ones that I need open right now. So my colors are hiding over here. So I'll move this over a little bit. Okay, because I was keeping that open to see the uh, what was going on with the webinar. Okay, so I'm going to be using the underpainting and auto painting palettes. So panels. So this is the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to go to underpainting and these you can find, it's in your photo art, but you can also find them down here. And you'll notice they're all checked, so that means they're all open. I'm going to uncheck restoration because I don't really need that one. Come on, uncheck. Goodbye. Go away. All right, so I've got my underpainting, my auto painting. The first thing that I can do is I can bump up, and anybody that knows my work knows I go for saturation. So I'm just going to bump her up a little bit. When I do my fine art work, my other paintings, my bar art and other things I do, I can take that way, way up. But in doing portrait painting, I just take it up enough to warm the skin up. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to auto clone, which will immediately give me the tracing paper on top. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to go, I'm on a PC, by the way. I'm not on a Mac. I have been PC forever, and um, I can work on a Mac, but it's not as easy for me. I love PC because I know it from the back side to the front side. So I'm going to go Controller Command T so that I don't see the image here, but it's still there. If I do this little toggle over here, toggle tracing paper, this is in your clone source, make sure you're on embedded image. There's a tendency sometimes to not be on that. You have to use this drop down and go to embedded image. And I'm going to click now to auto painting. And I'm going to click these two smart stroke and smart settings. And I'm going to now pick the brush. The last thing I do is pick the brush. So I'm in my MS Elegant Portrait brush set that I did just for this webinar. And over here, you click play, and I'm gonna just run it enough to make a background. I don't wanna see the real image coming up. So here we go, that's about enough. So I can now go manual and fill in some of these white spaces. And if I toggle the tracing paper, you'll see it's right there. And I'm going to just add a little bit more color to this. And I'm going to do this by hitting my Alt key and choosing colors. And I release this from clone color back to color so I could lay down some paint. So I want to lay down some colors that are in here. And I'm going to just add that might be a little bit too bright. Let me take that off. All right, so I'm just going to add a little bit right now. And sometimes I like to run it again, the auto painting, but I'm going to do it um, a different way so that you'll understand it better. I'm going to take some of these off. I, want, I like that beige. I'm going to save this right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this now. I save everything as a, a named file. So this is going to be red dress. This means Corel webinar to me and 01. I'm going to save it as a RIF file. Okay. And then I'm also going to save this as a JPEG and you'll see why afterwards. So I don't have to change the name here. I just have to slide down to JPEG. And I'm going to save that right here. I get this little thing that says, you sure you want to do that? I say, yes. Okay, I want to save that. And I always save this excellent. So now I have a JPEG and I have a RIF file. So they're both here. And the next thing I'm going to do is create another background file by using this 
JPEG. I'm going to come over here to the Layers palette, and this is where I'm going to add a layer. Down here, go New Layer. Okay, and I'm going to use the same brush, and now I'm going to add more paint onto this. So I'm going to add a little bit up here and a little bit over here. I'm going to add a variety of colors. I'll show you one that I already did. But I did want you to see this, add a little bit of, of this in. That in. Notice I'm not going too close to her head. And I'm also going to overlap some of these colors. And let's pick up a little bit more of that beige onto the outside. All right. So I'm just using this to lay down some color. And this is one that I've done already that I lay down color. So we're going to get up to that one. And now if I'm not if I'm not sure about these colors, what I do is I save this as a rip again. The reason is I have the layer in there and I can go back and change the layers and the opacity if I want to. So I'm going to call this one 02. This is really easy stuff I'm doing, guys. You're going to be able to all do this. Okay, I'm saving it as a Oh, it saved it as a JPEG. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> uh, we're going to try to... Uh, okay. Well, as long as I have that in there, I'll save this as a, as a rip now. See, there's always mistakes. I was just talking about that. So I can still save it, and we'll do it as a rip as number two. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop this layer come down here, layer commands, and I'm going to drop it. And now I'm going to do another auto painting. So I'm going back to underpainting. I'm going to clone it. And I'm going to do another background here. Control or Command T. But you'll see the background is under there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint this again. Go to auto painting, click the smart strokes. Go on, and now pick my brush. And this gives you the last brushes you've used. And if you just click on there, I'll have the last brush and it will show up. And I need to click here for it to go on clone. Okay, so click play. And I'm going to get a background with new colors. And I'm going to stop this one right about there. So we can see the two different backgrounds. Here's your background where I just laid down the paint. And if you come over here in your clone source, you open it up and you will find all of your versions in here. So I'm going to go to Untitled 3. Okay, that's where I was using these colors. And now we're going to save this. Um, I'm going to just paint through a little bit over here, a little bit of these white areas. So just with the same brush, a little bit and a little bit. Okay, so this is going to make a great background. So I'm going to save this one. And this one's going to be number three webinar. Save it first as the RIF. Now I'm going to save it as a JPEG. For this method, this works really well. I don't always save everything as RIFs and JPEGs. This just happens to be this particular method. Okay. So now I have this as a JPEG. So I'm going to lower this because I don't need that. What I need right now is her and the background. So if you notice here, when I clicked on this one, the only one that's showing is the, um, the background in there that I painted. So what I need is this one. Okay, these little marks that you see on my screen, if you're seeing them, I don't know if you are, 
these are um, uh, a memory little thing. They are not really in the painting. So Tanya, we have questions yet? Yes, perfect timing. Um, I don't know if you mentioned this, I may have missed it, but what size is the file that you're working with? Oh, this file um, is a um, eight, eight, by, 8 by 12 at 250 DPI. Okay, fantastic. And um, we only had one other question because you're doing such a thorough job. And thank you for talking about your system and the tablet and all of that. Um, the other question was, how do you like Painter 2019 compared to other versions? Um, I like this a lot, uh, but probably for different reasons than other people. Um, I like that we can paint much larger paintings with big paint strokes so that if I really want to work on a, a large file, I can. So for my other art that I do, that's really an advantage for me to be able to work on large files. But I also find the 2019, it just runs really fast. It's much faster to me. Yep, I, that was the main thing that we tried to work on to make sure that it was super fast, that you could use those big brushes and you know modifying the UI. But thank you for answering that. Um, so right now, I think we're good. Oh, okay, great. So now I'm going to go, so just to remind you, I click the tracing paper. This is what it looks like, my actual painting right now. And But I need to see her right now. So I'm going to go back to my brushes. Okay, the MS Elegant Portrait Brushes. And I'm going to get Soft Cloner. Now, Soft Cloner is included in the program. But there are two brushes I include in every set of my brushes that I put out. One is Soft Cloner and the other is Saturation Add, which is not in the program anymore. So you'll see how I use that one. So what I want to do is just bring her through right now so that I know where she is. I'll just get rid of some of her little lines. Toggle off. This is what the painting is coming to. And after I have her through, I'm going to start painting her. But right now I have to decide how much do I want to show of her. So right now I'm going to go a little bit lighter in this area. Let me see. I've got to get her hand. I don't want that much to show, but I do want her outfit to show because you'll see at the end when I show you a finished canvas um, what I do with them. Okay, so she's through enough right now. So now I can go get another brush and start painting her. And I'm going to start with my um, hairbrush. So I'm going to zoom in on her. And you'll see I do not use a lot of shortcuts. You'll find me going right to the tools and doing whatever I need to do. So the only shortcuts I do use, I use the B to get my brush back. And I also use the space bar. For moving the image around. Those are my two main shortcuts. So as I paint here with the hairbrush, you see her hair gets painted very nicely. So let's go down. This is where the space bar comes in, but I can move her down. Okay, a little bit. And sometimes I'll use it. Don't go by the brush's name. If it feels like it might be a good brush to paint something else with, just use it. Um, all right, so we got some of that done. Now, if I go back to the background, I should be able to paint that background in over there with the soft cloner again. You'll see it's just a little area that I went into. Let's see if I can paint that out. Nope. Okay, so the next thing I want to do very simply is go to her face. So I'm going to go to this blendy smooth. Now I do have another brush in there in this set 
that's called soft skin and oh no i thought it was in this this set nope okay well, you have silk skin is that silk what you skin. yeah that's it thank you You're welcome <laughs> there it is okay silk skin is sort of powdery and silk skin I designed actually for uh, using on babies. So it, you know, those little stork bites they get and the red marks. This silk skin is good for that. But the other one, the blendy smooth, is great for smoothing out all this other stuff. And it will get rid of everything. And yes, we're going to add some paint to her forehead there so that she doesn't have that mark. But this brush will actually watch two seconds. You got eyebrows painted, the eye. Look how the skin will just paint right up. See all those little dots disappearing? This brush is great for that. And it still leaves a brush stroke that it looks painterly, not retouched. You know, there's a difference. So here, I'm going to paint the eyebrow. And we'll paint over here, move it into there, paint the nose. And I have a lot of stuff to show you, so I'm going to go as fast as I can. And I know I won't get this completely finished, but you'll see all the steps to do it. Come through here. And see that highlight? I don't want to kill that highlight and the one under here. And if I did kill it, I would use one of my brushes here that says, um, not the saturation add, but the mare add highlights should be set. If you just take it over to white, and you can add a little bit over here if you want some more highlights. Now, these I have my workspace set up so I see the last 10 brushes over here. So I don't have to go find my brush all the time. Look at that, clean that right up. So it does a great job. And then I'm going to come down here and I'll smooth this all out. And go through the strap, go through where I painted before. Don't be afraid. Go over your lines, girls, guys. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'm going to make this brush bigger just so I can do this a little bit faster. You'll see the finished one anyway. All right, I want to show you that, that space up here that I said I was going to fix. I'm going to go back to my messier brush, Mare Messier, and I'm going to make it small. <laughs> okay, not that big. I'm going to add a layer, add a layer down here, new layer, and I want to pick up color from right there. Make sure you're set on color. Let's try that again. Right there, there we go. So I'm going to put a little bit on there. Now, because I'm on a layer, I can also um, back off the opacity. That's, that's the only reason I use layers. And now I'll blend that in with that blendy smooth. And there we go. She doesn't have a white forehead, but she still has a highlight up there. All right, let's go back to see the entire image. Okay. So you can see how I'm starting to get all that. I'll use this Blendy Smooth again, make it larger. I use the bracket keys. Um, yes, you can hold down the Control and the Alt and change your brush size, but I'm good with the bracket keys. And that is set up in preferences, which is a whole different thing. So I'm pretty much got her painted. Now there's a couple of things. Zoom back in on her face here. And I want to show you that saturation add brush that I use. Saturation add. I use this all the time. This is one of my favorite things. 
I'll get in even closer. Okay, so back to my saturation ad. All this does is saturate whatever color you're at. I'm going to make this larger and watch what happens to her cheek. It's very soft. There we go. And if we wanted to, we could even saturate those eye, that crazy eye shadow, which I love. Okay. And just press down on your tablet. And these colors will start to pop. So for a client that's not sure that they want a full painting, this would work really well for them because they're still semi-photographic and you could take this as far as you want to take it. I love the part of, of just dropping this whole part out and being able to control that. So I'm still on the layer here. I'm going to drop this layer. Okay, now if I want you to add some texture to this, so although this is not like completely finished painting, I want to make sure I get all these little steps in for you. If I want to add some texture, I go to my um, texture brushes. Let me make sure we're, I'm going to toggle off and on here a little bit. Okay. Let's go to the, um, down here, I want the ba, 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 square hard pastel. This interacts with paper. So I'm going to get this brush. I'm going to go ahead and clone this. I'm just going to do a quick file clone. And it didn't go to my brush. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Notice up here at the top, this is one of my favorite features, is that it shows the clone source at the top, so I always know what I'm doing. I love that. And over here, I can, on the fly, change paper. So I'm going to change this over to Artist Canvas right now. And for you to be able to see the texture, I'm going to need to zoom in and get my brush, make my brush bigger. Come on. Okay, and when I brush here, I'm going to get some texture in the background. Make sure you can see this. I think I'm not, but there it is. I would say I'm not pressing hard enough. But this will give you some canvas marks in your background. So you can see up here the canvas mark, and I'll also show it to you on something else. So if I went to, um, let's let's go ahead and raise the penetration on this. All right, it's coming up a little bit better. And I'm going to just change over. Just I do this just so that people can really see this. If I get the, um, the soft cloner, I think it was. I'm going outside my my lesson plan right now, so I'm confusing myself even. It should be showing with this one. All right, let me go back to the artist canvas that was showing. So what you will get is, let's see, oops. Sorry, guys, this stuff happens. Uh, you will get stuff like, I don't want those. That's the one I want. And this one's just a background. All right, getting confused with my own self. All right, we will stick with this, the one we're doing. I'll try not to lean on my tablet so much. Um, one of the other ways, very quickly, you can always do this with textures also. Add your, um, 
add everything in with textures. You can do it with the paper. So you can do it with any of those. Uh, back to my own brushes here. Okay, we got back to soft cloner. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is I wanna show you some of the other things I do. Um, you can auto paint as many backgrounds as you want. And I'll show you one other trick. Let's go back to, um, I want the rip file. Should be this one. Nope. I want to show you on the rip file the other thing that we can do. Looking for the one that had the, the layer in it. Because we can make changes in the layer. And let's just try another one, two, three rip. I know we saved this rip file. All right, if you have a layer in here on top that we painted on, let's just say we painted on that layer, okay? What you can also do, wait, that layer didn't go in. Okay, paint on that layer. All right, one of the other things you can do is go up here to effects, tonal control, and you can adjust the colors. And what you can do is do like a U-shift. See, now it'll really show up. You could do a saturation. You can get whatever color you want in there. So that background that you painted, when you have that layer in there that you added paint on, you could create a whole lot of different backgrounds just by changing this U-shift. So that's one of the tricks I like to do is to save all that stuff. So what I'm gonna do, I don't wanna save what I just did there. Let's bring her forward again. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to open her in Photoshop. All right, this is the original file. I want to show you that one again. Okay, so this is the original one that I worked on. But now that I have her all painted the way I want her, and you can see the little canvas marks in here in this one, see it all back here? That's that artist canvas with the soft pastel brush. So now that I have her, her size is, let's put her on the screen. Her size is, let's go over and double check, eight by 12 at 250, right? But I need a 20 by 24, so what are we gonna do? Who are we gonna call? So for me, what I do is I go to File, Automate, and I go to Alien Skin Blow Up 3. I use this program almost every single day. I mean, every single day I use this when I'm working. So her original size is there. Oh, wait, wrong one. <laughs> okay, let's cancel that. Oops. Let's go back to Photoshop. Sorry, I was enlarging. The wrong, I had the wrong one active. Okay, <laughs> let's do that again. So file, automate. Alien skin blow up three. Okay, look over here on the right. This is really simple. Eight by 12 at 250. Click on photographic. And if I wanted an 18 by 22, it will show me the cropping. So I don't think I want to do that and cut off her hand. But because this is that odd size. But if I go to 20 by 30, it will go ahead and it will. Square it up, see, the crop works perfect. So when I do this, I'm gonna go, okay, usually it pops out of Photoshop for some reason. I'll get it back, it comes back in though. Okay, it's using the filter. So this is now I'm taking this up to a 20 by 30 from an eight by 10. Look at this beautiful file. This is, I'll show it to you right here. This is 20 by 30 at 250. And look at the detail. This is not gorgeous. I mean, I use this software all the time. And I do have a discount code for you and where you can get it. And I am giving away one free. So look, I, you just, you can't even believe the detail that this brings up. This is my favorite, favorite. Everybody always asks me, have I tried this one? Have I tried that one? Yeah, I've tried them all. This is my go-to. Um, if I don't have this, I'm sort of in a panic, like if I didn't have Painter. This is my other one 
that I really trust. So there you are at 100%. Look at that. It's just beautiful. So this is now a uh, 20 by 30 on the left, and this is a 20 by 24. So one of the other things I do before I go to print it, so this is I'm talking about getting things ready to go to print, is I have another software I use that's very inexpensive now. Some of you may have known it, called Lucius. And Lucius runs very, very simple on my paintings. And this is something I check it and see if I need it and if it will make a difference. And if it does, then I go ahead and use it. Um, those who come to my workshops here, they see this all the time. I click on split channels. I click on display composite. It goes to black and white. And then all I do is go down here. I want more contrast. So if I take this down, you'll see that slider, it's more black and white. If I take this down, the green, it's going to become even more. And the blue, and I'll take this one down. And I should have a pretty dramatic effect. If I click here, all the color comes back, and I'll turn preview off. That was before, and that's after. I'll do it again. Before, after. And the reason is that it takes off um, what I call sort of a milky, milky look that comes onto them. I'll do this with the colors displayed right now so that you can see this. I took this way down. See how the red all changed? I'll take the green, but if you should do this in black and white. I'm doing this just to show you how strong the effects can be. And there's the blue, and there it is. So this was a before, and there's an after. So this is another way that you can be changing all of your images. I'm going to cancel this one out right now. So it's super simple to use this software. And um, we so that's uh, Lucius and Blow Up 3. And I'm just going to show you quickly where these are. So Blow Up, you will find, um, I'm on a website called kit.com slash msholan. Kit.com slash msholan. And if you go there and you go to the digital painting, these are all things that I use in my digital painting. And here's Blow Up. And if you click on that, it will tell you the coupon code, and it will take you right to Alien Skin. And there's your coupon code. So you can save some money on that. And if you want the Lucius, whoops, same thing. Click on Lucius. My code is there. And this will take you right to Lucius. And you would, Lucius is only $39.95 um, if you just want the Photoshop plugin. So that's a deal. <laughs> so um, these things will also be put out uh, in my newsletter. And if you want to sign up for my newsletter, go to MarilynSholin.com and then scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, keep going. And you find right here, sign up. Okay. And you just go to the sign up and fill out the information and you say whether you're interested in buying my art or the workshops and education so you'll see also I do have some I do have tutorials on this website okay there's some um, one of the most popular and I'm going to talk a little bit about this one actually is where did we go let's go back up here and this one this one is very, very popular. This is a four hour. I'm going to give you just a brief look at what I do with doing the paintings on the canvas. But this is a four hour tutorial that um, you download. So you own it. You do whatever you want with it. So let me go back into Painter and Photoshop, actually, going to Photoshop. All right, I'm going to lower this and lower this. All right, what I want here is these. One, 
two, three, four, and five. Okay. All right. I'm going to talk to you just for a few minutes about wet painting. And I use all acrylics, but I do use some other things with my acrylics. So this is a product, Print Shield. Oh, all the pictures you're looking at here are actually the printed 20 by 24 of this file. So I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes about them. If I print my own canvas or if I have canvas printed and I don't have it sealed by the lab or sealed, let's say you use a printer, um, but your friend can print the canvas or, you know, a lab. And you don't need to have them seal it if it's not that large. If it's a 30 by 40, I do have the lab seal it. But Premier Print Shield is what I spray onto the print to seal it. What you're sealing is the ink. So you're protecting the ink. If you don't protect the ink, it will definitely, if you spill water on it, it's going to run. So this is my first step. My second step is an isolation coat. And this is what I use for my isolation coat, Golden Products, uh, Soft Gel Semi-Gloss. This is their new label, which is pretty nice. So I put this on with a brush, thin, and I let it dry. Now my, now my print and my spray are all protected and separated from the paint. So the third one here is you can see some of the paint on here. If you look, you can see there's some paint on her. And I wanted you to really see how this canvas printed. This is a 20 by 24 that I sized up from an 8 by 10. Is that detailed and beautiful? I mean, it is really, really a beautiful print. And then what I do, I have some new things I do. This is, and this is brand new this year. I do embellishing right on the canvas. And you can see this is raised. I'm doing a lot of the embellishing. And I will have a class up, um, a tutorial up about the embellishing uh, later on. And that's going to be at Patreon. And Patreon is where I have everything. Um, I'm no longer doing separate tutorials and, you know, pushing out like, you know, big, big items all at once. So what I do now for my education is I do everything on Patreon and it's slash M and I have the link everywhere. And I already have up the elegant portrait brush. You do need to be become a patron at the $25 a month level. And for the new tutorials I'm going to put up, because I'm going to show these brushes uh, on a video. It'll be posted tomorrow. And I'm also going to do an in-depth on the lesson that I just did for you. So we'll all be here on Patreon. And for 25 bucks, you can get it. If you want to cancel after a month or two, you can cancel. But you can go ahead and get everything there. And you'll see I have a lot of tutorials on here. Everything is tagged. Um, I have a whole lot of tutorials. I have eyes tutorials and things like that. Let me go back to Painter. So that's patreon.com slash msholin. I use msholin for my Instagram also. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, my msholin account shows paintings I've sold. If I can get a picture of the people with them, um, it, will, uh, it will show a lot of different things, actually. I didn't think to bring that up. So let me just bring that up. And it's really nice when the galleries send me pictures like this of painting sold. So I'm in five galleries in two states, seem to be in six galleries. So if you go here, you'll see this was a commission for a moonshine company, Copper Barrel Distillery. And they use that for all their information, for all their logo. They do printouts, they do all kinds of things with that. This is a happy customer, another happy customer. So if you follow me on here, you will find more happy customers. <laughs> if I can, you know, but this I do all my art is on here. Um, I only talk about my art on this Instagram account. So that's where a lot of my bar art is and that kind of thing. Now let me get a painter back up. How am I doing out there, Tanya? 
Um, you're you're doing great. I do have a few questions if you want to break for those now. Yeah, let's do that now. And I'm sorry, I've been fielding a lot of questions along the way. So I think you just showed exactly where you can get your brushes. Yes, so, I did. Okay, good. Because that's my Patreon. A million people were asking that. Um, some people are asking what kind of paper do you print on? Because when you're adding this much texture within the painting, do you then print on just regular paper or canvas? Okay, here's the process how it works. There's only one original. So I paint on canvas, the one original, and by the time I'm finished, it's mixed media because I've used a lot of different things. I've used textures. Uh, gel mediums, all these things that are in the acrylic world. So once that one painting is done, we photograph that painting and now we have a file that we can print on paper. And the paper I use exclusively is Red River paper. Red River paper, they're out of Texas. It is a privately owned company. Their papers all come from Europe. They're beautiful papers, absolutely gorgeous. And they are well, well priced. It's uh, You will get one-on-one -on -one service and you'll get a great price. The one I use the most for the galleries I'm in, because we sell hundreds of prints every month in the galleries, is um, a high gloss polar. It's called polar white paper. And that's what we use on our printers. We have Canon and Epson printers. We only print ourselves up to 13 by 19. So that is the paper that we use for that. If I want a watercolor paper, I use Red River Paper Aurora. So that's the other paper. So, but there is only one original. The originals sell anywhere from 800 to 1600, depending upon how much work is involved in them and how much materials and things like that. Um, commissions usually start around the same price, depending upon what they want to have you put into uh, the image. Um, when I do a commission also, they have a choice. If they want, they can have just the digital file printed on metal, and I use Miller's Lab for that, or they can have the full original canvas. So we decide from there what they want. Next question. Okay, you covered a lot of the questions that I had. Everybody wanted to know the papers, the labs you use, and all of that. Um, I think the final question that I have that has not been addressed is, I, and I might have missed this, did you say you use the Wacom Art Pen? Um, I own a Wacom Art Pen. <laughs> okay. How do I, how do I explain that? I own a Wacom art pen and um, but I end up, you know, I end up using the regular pen and people most of the time and people ask me about this, uh, what tip I use. I have tested every tip with the Wacom pen and I like the original one it comes with, the black shiny one. Um, I That's just what I prefer and lets me paint the way I want to paint. Okay. that's. That's a fair point. <laughs> so um, it's everybody has a personal preference. And, right. you know, the art pen is made to give the full rotation, which is why, you know, many of the brushes and painter it works with. But it really right. depends on the brushes that you rely on. If you're not using those brushes, then you wouldn't need the art pen. Exactly. Uh, I, I think when I... Um, when I think I'm going to use the art pen when I uh, start doing there, I have like a lot of things I have to finish before the holidays that uh, to get them out into the galleries and all. But where is that? Oh, I must have hit it somewhere. Okay. Well, I, I think you all saw on my Facebook page the cat I posted. Everybody's been asking me. I own seven cats. And everybody says, how come I don't have paintings of my cats? It's because they're my cats, and I love them to death, but, you know, I just haven't gotten around to painting them. 
I wanted something special and different for that to be painting the cats and I'm developing that right now and uh, I think that the art pen will be great for doing them. It'll be a whole different look. And I'll be using Corel Painter in this very similar manner that I just did these backgrounds. I'll be creating colors for them and testing out new backgrounds. I'm just, I was going to go over here just to my Facebook for a second. And um, so this is, this is going to be up on Patreon, her step-by-step -step of doing her, the same method. But down here should be... Oh, where'd my cat go? Okay, it's going to be over here. That's where I saw it. Okay, this is the cat look. This is a look I'm going for. And if you look at this, you can figure the lesson I just did, I'm going to paint a background all crazy, all different colors, and I'm going to actually bring that background into the cat using a very similar method we just did. So I'm going to decide about my my wiggles, my angles, and you know, all of that. And I think that the art pen will be fun for doing something with this. All right, I am getting all of a sudden a ton of questions about, <laughs> okay. um, well, just asking what you've already said. So who is the printer? Um, you know, what plugins did you use? Where do we get the discount code? Would there be a way for us to summarize all of that in the email that will go out to everybody? Is that possible, Marilyn? Or do you want them to go to your website and sign up? Okay, I say you can, we, we can actually do both, but if you go to my website and sign up for the newsletter, like I said, just go to here, it'll open up in the home. And if you scroll down that home page, it's going to pop up right here, right before the bottom to sign up. And you can register for my newsletter. And you can stay on there as long as you want. I'll be putting out uh, the newsletter this week with all of the links to everything. So if you go here, you will be able to get all the links and the discount codes and find where everything is. And I'll also send them to you, Tanya. Okay. That would be fantastic. So just so you all know, I know some people join late. This is being recorded, and I'll put this up on youtube.com forward slash painter tutorials by the end of today. You'll receive a follow-up email from GoToWebinar within 24 hours. So about this time tomorrow, I'll include as much information <laughs> as I can in the follow-up email. I'll, I'll sync with Marilyn after this. Um, so that you have right. all that information, but you can certainly re-watch the webinar and all the questions that are coming in right now have been answered within the webinar with most of the Canvas printing and the plugins and all of that information. It's towards the end, so you can always fast forward your way there. Um, okay, so this is where they can get the brushes, and I already put it on my Facebook page. So they get the brushes here when they become a patron. And the other thing, Tanya, is we need to pick a winner for the Alien Skin Blow Up 3 giveaway. Oh, okay. Let's so see. I can't see any names or anything, so you do it. No, I know. Okay, I'm going to do a random. Let's see who I land on. Um, I have to make sure that the people are still here. So uh, Jeffrey Brodkin is the winner of, you're giving away a blow up? A blow up three. All right, so I will be sure to get you Jeffrey's information. And we're also giving away Painter 2019. So another random, mm -hmm. yeah, random selection here is Michael Stone. So Michael Stone, you are the winner of Painter 2019, and I will follow up with you right after the session. Okay, awesome. Great. Congratulations to both of you. Yeah, congrats, everybody. And Marilyn, thank you so much for the session today. Um, you know, I'll have to do another quick scan of the questions just to make sure everything has been addressed, but... 
Um, we'll be sure to follow up with all of you. Check youtube.com forward slash painter tutorials. In a few hours, the webinar has to process, and then I just take a quick look and I post it up to the YouTube channel. And we will have another exciting session next month, which is foren forensic digital art. Um, it's gonna be very different from anything that we've done before, helping to solve murder mysteries, basically using Painter. Um, so with that, that, yeah, it's, it's just different. Um, so thank you everybody for attending today. I'll give you the information about next month's webinar in the follow-up email. And thank you so much, Marilyn. I know you put a lot of time and effort into this and we greatly appreciate it. Oh, you are very, very welcome. And I'm going to be excited to get this up step by step on my Patreon site also with a video. So we'll have another video with even more detail in it because an hour is not enough time. Oh, I know. It never is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for coming. Bye.